Breaking news on the definition of essential use. In this Chemco Conferences news flash, Christina de Avila from the European Commission DG Environment will tell us more about the essential use criteria. Christina, thanks for providing Chemco Conferences with this group on this important and essential news. Hello, Tier. Thank you. It is our duty and my pleasure to inform key stakeholders. Where are you? I'm in Bangkok for the last preparations of Chemcon Asia 2024 that will start on June 3rd. Can you tell us why the European Commission developed the essential use concept? Our society relies on chemicals for a wide range of functions. Chemicals are at the heart of most consumer products and Europe's major value chains, such as electronics, transport, think of batteries for electric vehicles, construction materials, etc. At the same time, we know that exposure to certain chemicals may lead to severe chronic health effects, long-term environmental impacts, and contamination of our food and water resources. All this also results in high costs to society, for example, for healthcare and pollution remediation. One of the main goals of the chemicals strategy for sustainability is to increase the, increase the level of protection and prevent harm to humans and environment, in particular by phasing out the most harmful substances. In this context, and as part of the chemicals strategy, the Commission committed to develop an essential use concept to ensure that the most harmful chemicals are only allowed if their use is essential for society. The aim of implementing the concept is to increase the protection of health and environment by accelerating the phase out of the uses of the most harmful substances that are non-essential, and when they are essential, to provide time for the substitution. That's all very well, but how would the Commission define what essential uses are? Well, this is not the first time that the Commission, within its regulatory powers, is called to determine which chemicals can or cannot be used. Similar calls stem from the ozone depleted Substances Regulation, which implements the Montreal Protocol, the Biocidal Products Regulation, or even REACH, where the Commission decides whether the benefits of using a substance of very high concern outweighs the risk in view of socioeconomic considerations. In our official communication document on essential uses, the Commission has defined that a use of the most harmful substance is essential only if the following criteria are met. First, if its use is necessary for health or safety or is critical for the functioning of society. And second, if there are no acceptable alternatives. These criteria are cumulative. For a use to be essential, both criteria must be met. However, they provide for flexibility to consider specific aspects and already existing definitions in other pieces of legislation where the concept could be applied. Flexibility is important. So how would the concept be applied? Good question. The criteria are not directly applicable. It is a concept. The concept of essential use, now officially published by the Commission, only has legal effect when introduced into specific legislation. So far, there is no EU legislation that contains a legal definition of essential uses of substances. Therefore, it would be my means of integration of the concept in individual pieces of legislation that the criteria will become applicable. We think that the essential use concept is a practical tool that can be integrated in a specific EU legislation to determine when a use of a most harmful chemical is essential for society. In other words, when it's justified from a societal point of view to use a most harmful substance. The essential use concept is about the specific uses of certain chemicals. The use of a substance may be essential in one product or context, but not in another. In addition, not all uses may be essential within a sector. Great that it will be implemented pragmatic. Can you explain how this initiative will benefit companies? The essential use concept will benefit companies and businesses by raising their awareness and by providing indications that substances otherwise targeted for phase out can continue to be used when they are needed to fulfill societal needs provided that there are no alternatives available. So it can be seen as an investment horizon for maintaining or increasing production capacity in the EU that is needed to underpin the green and digital transition, for example, or to provide defense capabilities where products or equipment currently rely on uses of the most harmful substances. The communication also provides incentives for more research and innovation into safer and sustainable alternatives for the most harmful substances, and it will promote innovative companies who can offer acceptable alternatives or toxic free consumer products. The initiative will help position the EU industry as a global front runner, capitalizing on a high consumer demand for safer and toxic free products 
in the large EU internal market. Finally, this concept can also be a tool to provide incentives under voluntary schemes such as sustainable finance and possibly other initiatives aiming to promote and reward the transition to safe and sustainable products and practices. Christina, once again, thank you for your valuable contribution. And of course, more on essential use and other European developments at Chemcon Asia 2024 in June in Bangkok. Thank you very much, Steve. It is my pleasure to contribute to this topic and I hope I will be able to see you in Bangkok.